actually get this question a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make a video and cover it all. Now, I'm not gonna say names because I don't wanna pronounce them wrong. These are my two most recent comments where people ask me, why should they root their device? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and answer that in a video just so I can refer to people to this video instead of replying the same thing over and over again. One of the very first things I recommend after ruining a device is Titanium Backup. Because from there, you can uninstall apps that your phone normally wouldn't let you uninstall. Like if you have an HTC device, you probably have Sprint TV, Football, NASCAR, apps that nag you that there's an update available and you have to update it or just ignore the update but you can't uninstall it because it's in your system partition so the only way to remove it is if you have root so that's a really really big advantage of being able to get rid of all the stock sprint apps that you can't normally uninstall without root second ROM manager with ROM manager you can flash custom recovery to your device if it's supported, and from there, you can install a ROM. A ROM that I always install is CyanogenMod. In fact, when I purchase a new phone, the first thing I look at is, does it have CyanogenMod? I remember when I was getting the Transform, and I had the option of getting the Hero. I truly debated on getting the Hero because of CM6 that was available for it at the time. I really wanted to get the Hero because of that. But I stuck with the Transform, which is a good option, because I have a lot of followers that have Samsung Transform. In fact, I still have it, and I need to make a Transgender ROM on it, and Transgender on Crack, which I really do like the theme that they included with that. So more videos than that are going to come. I kind of look at devices like which one are people going to want to see more. I don't, like the HTC Hero, I have that phone and I installed Ice Cream Sandwich on it, but oh my goodness, talk about laggy, that's terrible. Why would you want to install that on your device? It's unusable. Uh, it's a cool concept, but I recommend signing for my 7.2. I really do like it. So yeah, once you install ROM Manager, you can install Custom Recovery, and from there you can install Kernels. That's another thing, is Kernels. Um, kernels give you new features, better battery life, root access, support for Wi-Fi tether. And I'm going to go ahead and answer that too. I'm going to answer that get it out of the way. If you root your device and you use wireless tether for root users, your bill will not go up. I have been using Wi-Fi tether for root users since I got my Samsung Moment in 2009, okay? This app is crazy awesome. I have not paid Sprint a dime for Wi-Fi tether. I'm already paying them out the butt to use their service in the first place, so why give them anything extra? That's how I look at it. I guess it depends on your conscience, really. It depends on your conscience. If you feel you should give Sprint $30 a month and you can afford it, do it. But I have not had any luck using the normal native hotspot feature and 4G working at the same time. It always disconnects from 4G and then goes to 3G. With Wi-Fi tether for users, you get to use 4G and tether which is insanely fast. I love it. And speaking of 4G, the Galaxy Nexus and the HTC One are coming to Sprint very soon. I think the Galaxy Nexus comes out this month and it's rumored that the HTC One comes out in June. And I'm getting my wife the Galaxy Nexus and I'm going to get the HTC One. I live here in Kansas City. LTE is coming here very soon and I'm psyched. I'm excited. I'm freaking out. LTE is way faster than 4G WiMAX that comes with this phone. 4G WiMAX is nothing but clear wire. You're picking up a router, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's not like it's coming from satellites high up in the sky or something like your normal 3G service is. So titanium backup, you can back up all your apps. I have a whole video on this. I'll put it in the description. You can back up your apps. You can sync them to Dropbox or Box.net. And then if you get another phone or if someone steals your phone or if your SD card gets formatted or corrupted or anything like that, you can just download all the data from Dropbox or Box.net and it restores that back on your phone. So if someone steals your phone or if you lose your SD card, it gets corrupted or anything like that, all of your backups are just fine. All of them. So that's something I highly recommend. I highly recommend every now and then opening Titanium Backup. I tried to show it on camera, but the way my setup is right now, it's not really working. But open up Titanium Backup, Menu, Batch, Redo Backups for Modified Data. Anytime, if you played a game and you got a little bit further, or if you change settings in an app or something, it detects that that's modified data, and it will back up the modified data only, so you're not, you know, redoing your whole phone every time and then go to schedules and either sync it to Dropbox or sync it to box.net and click run. No longer is it on the overview screen anymore. I'm gonna update my video on that as soon as I can. I'm a really busy person. I work full time and I do videos when I'm not at work. And like my daughter, 
has cerebral palsy. So we gotta take her to her therapist, and then we gotta take her to the doctor today. So I am a busy person. I don't get to do this all day long. I have a four-year-old that's disabled that I gotta take care of. Oh my goodness, she turns five in May, and then the next day, Men in Black 3 comes out, and then the next day is my six-year anniversary. Men in Black 3 is gonna be awesome. And the Trials Evolution for the Xbox 360 comes out April 18th. That's gonna be freaking awesome. I've been playing Trials HD since 2009 when it came out. Crazy stuff's going on. So we covered Titania Backup, ROM Manager, installing custom ROMs, and a custom ROM completely replaces what's on your phone. It's kind of like when you have a computer with Windows XP, and then you wipe it and install Windows 7 on it. It completely changes everything. That's something I'm glad I remembered to bring up. On a Windows 7 or Vista computer, if you try to install a program, a little box comes up and says allow, because you're basically granting it admin permissions. If you don't have admin permissions, you can't install it. CCleaner, one of the greatest programs of all time to me. And Defraggler as well, I love Defraggler. If you run that, you have to run it as administrator. Now, I know what I'm doing, I really do. So I disable UAC, that's the first thing I do. UAC, user account control. If you're new to computers, I do not recommend disabling it because you could easily install a virus or something and it no longer prompts you to allow it. It just automatically grants it admin permissions. Same thing with Android, kind of. When you root your phone, you're basically granting yourself admin rights. When you want to remove an app or something with Titanium Backup, a little box pops up and says, do you want to allow this program root permissions? And in English terms, that means, do you want to grant this permission? And you choose yes and remember if you want to. And then it remembers that you chose yes and every time it asks for admin rights, aka super user privileges, it just gives it that. That's the easiest way I can explain it for someone that's new to Android. Root basically means admin. That's how I look at it. But yeah, when I buy a device, first thing I do is, what root methods are there? Is it going to have sign your mind? I bought the EVO 3D because the Hero, the EVO Shift, and the EVO 4G all had stable builds of sign your mind for them. Unfortunately, this phone does not, which is a serious letdown, which I'm almost tempted to just get myself the Galaxy Nexus since it's stock Android and you can run fast boot OEM unlock and you have full access of your phone. HTC makes you go through their stupid HTC dev thing, register your phone so that way they know that you permanently voided your warranty, and with the Nexus series, you can lock it again later on and take it to the store, and they don't ever know otherwise. It just says locked. But the simple fact is there's going to be root methods for the HTC One through Sprint, and hopefully the Science of my team can come out with the ROM for it. Hopefully this explains root to you in a nutshell. My camera started recording, so I'm not sure where I left off at. I went on and on and on, and my 60D... Once it hit a 4 gig file, it quits recording. I didn't know, so I don't know what all I missed out on. And I sat here talking in front of it like this, and it freaking wasn't recording. So, I realize my channel isn't for advanced people. Some people make videos, and they act like it's your very first time ever touching an Android phone. My recommendation to you is if you're brand new to Android, get used to it. Feel comfortable with it. Then venture onto rooting. Because there are dangers with rooting. If you root your phone, you're voiding your warranty. And if you root your phone, it is possible that you're going to brick it. And if you brick it, it's your fault. It depends on your conscience whether you're going to tell the truth and try to get a replacement, or if you're going to be honest, say you voided your warranty and pay the full price. Sometimes there's ways of telling that you tried to root your phone and you messed it up. Like for example, if you're stuck in a boot loop and you go to the Sprint store and they get it out of a boot loop, super user installed on the system partition. So even a factory reset is not going to get rid of super user. So they're going to see that you did root it. There are other ways where you root it and you permanently break it and there's really no way to bring it back to life. Again, this all depends on your honesty. I've heard people say, my device is fast enough. Like I commented on MKHD, I think that's his name. I commented on his Transformer Prime video and said, I didn't see super user in your app list. And he's like, there's no reason for me to root it because it's fast enough. That's not how I look at it. Every device I've ever owned has been rooted. I won't buy a device that can't be rooted, it's that simple. If I buy a device and it can't be rooted, I will get another phone. I root my devices so that way, for example, in Temple Run on my Android tablet, my Transformer Prime, I got pretty far. I wanted to play it on my phone and do a screencast that I put on my second channel. So I just synced it to Dropbox, downloaded it on my EVO 3D, restored it, and left off right where I was at on my Transformer Prime. I didn't lose any progress. That's the best part about rooting. That's the best part. Sure, you can use Wi-Fi Tether. I don't know what all I covered and what all I didn't. Damn it. For those of you that want to, I have a second channel, Josh is Nice, where I post almost daily updates. Like for example, I'm 26. I just now got braces because while I was growing up, I didn't have parents that cared enough to get them for me. Most people go through high school 
and they have them before then or while they're in high school and their parents pay for them. I had to pay out of pocket and every time I've wanted to get them I haven't been able to because of funds. So I was finally able to get them this year and this is the only reason I'm talking in front of a camera right now. All my other videos before January 31st I was behind the camera. If there was a video of me or a picture of me smiling I quickly deleted it. I would go to the end of the earth to get that video or picture removed if it wasn't me that posted it. Simply because I got made fun of big time growing up and it got to the point where I couldn't even stand in front of a mirror and I would practice talking like this and you know show as little as possible while I was having a conversation with somebody that's how I was I wouldn't talk like this because you can see my mouth and this is all stuff I put on my second channel when I got races January 31st I have made progress since then again this is a tech channel I'm not gonna go into detail if you want to see the progress I've made Please subscribe to my Josh's Nice channel. I post videos almost every day of like my daughter, my life, my progress update. For example, I made a video saying that if something happened, that I would do something. You've got to go to my Josh's Nice channel to see what I'm talking about. Or you just wait till tomorrow and I'll post the video then. Again, this is a tech channel. I'm not going to post, you know, random things. I want my videos to be edited. I want the quality to be good. I want people to not feel like I'm going to spam them with videos. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my Josh is Nice channel. Link's in the description. I'll try to remember to put an annotation on the screen, but I'll probably forget. I'm going to look ridiculous tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to look ridiculous, and I'm going to make a video. And like I said, very few videos will be posted other than tech videos. Like, my daughter has cerebral palsy, and it's getting worse. So they're going to put her in a wheelchair. She's getting Botox here soon in her hips because she's locked forward and her cerebral palsy is just getting worse and that's why they're going to put her in a wheelchair um, for the time being and I'll post videos like that. I'll post big major update videos like that on this channel but for everything else I'll put on my Josh's Nice channel that I don't feel belongs here. So if you're curious at all about my world and you want to see more videos I post videos a lot for my Transformer Prime and my phone on my Josh's Nice channel. This is what would Josh do. And if you stuck out through all of this, please leave me a comment. Give this video a thumbs up, please. It helps me out a lot. And click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks a lot. Again, this is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.